Welcome everyone and thank you um, for listening to this webinar um, about the Intel versus technology. Um, today we will have uh, three speakers who will uh, demo their projects. So we will have Kfira Matza and Doli uh, Ovadia Nahum from uh, Israel. Um, right after that we will have a presentation from Anthony Thomas from uh, London, UK. And uh, last uh, we will have a presentation by Rudy Aramayo from Austin, Texas. And um, yeah, so uh, basically uh, we, you will have time to uh, ask your questions during the presentation. So feel free to do that. And uh, yeah, so we're going to start with Kfir and uh, Dolly right now, who are going to uh, present Kara Keystar. Oh, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Dolly Ovadia, and I'm Onisus co-founder. Um, now, at Onisus, we develop easy-to-use computer vision solutions, and today I'd like to share with you how we've been integrating Intel's RealSense into some of our applications. Uh, so one of the biggest benefits of using RealSense has been the wide availability of this camera. It's been integrated in substantially more devices than the rest of the depth cameras combined. And there is a lot of data we can gather from regular cameras as well, obviously, but today we're going to focus on uh, RealSense. Uh, now, cameras can tell us a lot about the person that is in front of them, from age to gender, uh, the shape of the face, the eye color, uh, the skin color, and even the, user, the user's mood, allowing us to provide a truly personalized experience for each user. We can uh, understand and react to gestures and body movement, facial gestures, uh, and we can mix between the virtual and the real, allowing us to create like completely uh, out of the like extraordinary experiences. Now I'm gonna show you the the demo itself of the karaoke application we built. Um, give me just a second to share the. Hi everyone, uh, so I'm going to show you the actual demo itself. First I want to show you an app a karaoke application we we'll built uh, using our platform and then I'll show you how we actually build it without writing a single line of code. Uh, so the karaoke application basically takes the user and immerse them into a video clip in real time uh, without the need for a green screen, without the need for any uh, special uh, devices, just uh, real sense uh, 3D camera. So here we have a ThinkPad, a Lenovo Yoga 15. This is the Mini Me. Here is the here the application we will run, and here we will show you the the working environment, our working environment. And they're both connected to this screen, so I will just switch to whatever is needed. Uh, so yeah, let's dig in. Let's let's show you how this karaoke application works. So you can see me, I'm immersed in the video clip, I can see myself, I can sing, I can record myself, I can upload my video into the different social media sites, uh, it works in 20 frame, 24, between 20 and 24 uh, frames per second, so it's pretty quick. Uh, there is no big delay, there is always a little delay, but uh, nothing that you can actually see. Uh, yeah, so it's really awesome. Also, uh, karaoke is, is something that has been left on change since it was invented in the 60s. So this really enhances the whole karaoke experience by not only allowing people to feel like rock stars, but actually see themselves and, and be part of like this rock star kind of video clip, uh, which is really, really cool. Uh, now, I don't know how to sing this song, so I'm going to go to another song that I, I can actually uh, sing. So let's go for this one. So this, like every every style, every singing style has a different template. In this case, this is the rock template. You can see there's like a grungy effect, and I, I see myself with this like effect on, or like posterized effect. On. Live 
No, just kidding. I'm not. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, whatever. Uh, now that that's that's another template. We have uh, show you just. A 60s template, which will be the one that I will be showing in the platform. And uh, I'll show you how, how we actually build it. Because, see? Uh, um, again, now this one has like a TV, like an old TV effect. You'll see it just now. Wait, there. Can you see the lines? No. Yeah, there you go. So there's like this, this like, like distorted TV lines and, and the, the 60s background and the old TVs and stuff. So, so that's another one. Now, this was built using our platform that I'll show here. Let me just switch it. Uh, there you go. So, yeah, this will be this scene. Uh, and uh, you can see here. Uh, like all the elements that build the actual scene. I'm just turning the eyes off. Uh, this will be the, the human object. Once I put this object onto the, onto the scene, I, I can use it to, to create multiple stuff. So for example, here I, I pressed remove background so it will immerse the user into the video clip, but I could choose to uh, show tracking points, for example. And those tracking points I can use to put accessories on the person, for example, bags or like uh, a tie or change clothing or do anything with him really. So, so like imagine you have a, a Christmas campaign and you want to come out with like a, a little video clip that makes people uh, Santa Claus. You can dress them up, put them in, into like a snowy background and, and, and you're done. It's, it's very very simple. And everything is drag and drop so let's let's create our own scene. I'll add a new scene. You can still see myself. Yeah. I'll add a new scene uh, I'll put a background video, in this case it's a background video of like a music band. I could set it nicely but uh, the, the mouse is not exactly comfortable. So here I, I'll press remove background and the person will see themselves into the video clip. It took me exactly, what, a minute to? So it's really really simple to do. Uh, now we we can choose to create something that uses, for example, face tracking. So I'll throw everything away, I'll close everything, I'll put a face tracking object. In this case I will also remove the background and I will choose to show my tracking points. Uh, now these tracking points can be used to, for example, put on makeup, eyeglasses, uh, I, I don't know, you can put a hat, you can really like uh, personalize the, the user experience. You can even make people look differently because we have um, real-time effects. So for example, a person can see themselves with huge eyes and a blue face and, and, and like, uh, in like an avatar kind of, uh, of um, interaction. So you can make, build like really uh, different kinds of of things in an environment that is completely graphic, very similar to Flash or After Effects and so on. Uh, that way you don't have to write a single line of code and you can create different kinds of things that uh, use these kind of um, technologies. So yeah, uh, we also have an interactive mode that I won't get into but it allows you to graphically uh, design your interaction uh, using gestures. Um, so yeah, I hope you, you enjoyed it. I'm going back to the presentation. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, uh, as I was saying, the applications can uh, be or HTML5 or C++, depending on the environment you want them to work. If it's a, it's a, if it's a, a web application or if it's a, an actual app. Uh, now, I'd like to share with you some use cases for like the, the platform itself. 
virtual mirrors. Today, most of our clients are retail clients for online virtual mirrors. And one of the most surprising features they use is the ability to provide personalized recommendation to their users. So for example, in makeup, a user can be used it uh, can be awkward an eyeshadow that suits their eye color uh, or makeup that suits their skin tone. It really like you can create really personalized kind of recommendation system. Uh, eyewear companies usually want to know the user's face shape so they can recommend the best uh, frame for the, the shape of the user, the face of the user. Uh, this way an online store can provide a service that is as close as what they could provide in an actual store. Now, creating a memorable experience for users is the aim of every interaction, I believe. And what better way to do that than to immerse the users and make them part of the interaction itself, be it in a personalized social campaign, in a publicity stunt, uh, advert games, it's, it's endless. Uh, in this example, you can see, for example, uh, a promo for the movie Avatar. Now, this is a project that I really, really like. Uh, it was made by an interior design student, and what it does, it allows users that are physically away to interact with one another through, through a projection. So in this example, you see a dad in one room, and maybe miles away from him is his daughter, but he's still able to minimize the distance by physically interacting with each other through the, through the application. Uh, there are many projects that deal with medical assistance, be it through tracking the user's action or to predict or announce any abnormalities uh, from their movements or helping them stay fit through either exercising or uh, a personalized physiotherapy app and so on. So today we see the potential mainly in retail advertising and a little bit of gaming, but imagine the possibilities in education, in training, in art. Imagine the applications that could be built for wearables or the Internet of Things. Our only limitation is our imagination. Thank you. Thank you, Dolly. That was really cool. So uh, do you have any questions? Uh, if you have any questions... Sorry? For, if you have any questions for Dolly and Kafir, feel free to uh, send them to, to us and then we can tell them. In the meantime, uh, now we're going to, so thank you, Dolly, um, for your presentation. Um, now we're going to go uh, and uh, see uh, Anthony's um, presentation. Hi, Anthony. Hello there. So, okay, uh, all right. So, yep. Uh, sharing your screen. Lovely. All right, let's see what's going on here. All right, okay, well, uh, all right, so this is my project. So I got hold of the real set sensor a while ago and was asked to have a go with this and see if there was something interesting I could do for a presentation. I thought this would be a fantastic opportunity to learn how the real sensor SDK works and try and do something kind of interesting with it. Um, so the thing that I decided to go about doing was to try and connect the real sense sensor and its three-dimensional and, and its ability to pull out three-dimensional coordinates from a from space uh, and interface that to something else. Uh, something that I found I was looking around through um, I was looking around I was looking around through uh, Maplins and they had a fantastic uh, they had a, I think they had some kind of robot arm which I thought was quite cool and I saw that someone has Actually, uh, maybe here they had uh, it's essentially essentially the arm which is in this product. Uh, I saw this and I read some articles that someone had kind of hacked it and then hacked the USB driver. So I thought, what would be a good project is to interface the three-dimensional spatial coordinates that you can get out of the Intel RealSense sensor and plug it into something like this, which you can then move around and uh, and yeah, you can you can you can move around and you can use the positional coordinates that are here to drive the movement of the arm. Um, so I've written a, so I wrote a small Windows application to go and uh, to go do this. Uh, and so I guess the purpose of what we, what I'm going to do today is run through is run through this application, what it does, and a bit of you know how we've gone through the SDK, some of the things I found that were nice and not so nice, and uh, yeah, just generally how the project went. Okay, so open this up and 
yeah, okay. So what we what we can do here, I'll actually I'll share my this is going to be a bit odd because I've got to share my webcam as well as this at the same time. Um, but here's here's the application. Basically, I can activate my arm from here, uh, and I can also activate my camera and bind those things those two things together. Uh, so I can put the camera on now, and there's there, and you can see that I now have a arm which is ready to move. So what I'll do is I'll switch to the other camera, and we will. Uh, and I'll show you that I'm basically going to be making use of the hand tracking algorithm within the RealSense SDK to actuate this arm. Decided to move. Okay. So let's go to the other. Share my webcam. Okay. So the RealSense camera is attached to my monitor, which is in my laptop at the moment, and I'll put this down a bit. Okay. So I'm going to move my hand up, and it's going to be picked up by the RealSense sensor. And so my hand has now been activated. So basically, by moving my hand around in space, I can now, it will, now this will follow my hand. So I can do this. Uh, let's just move the camera around a bit more so we can see where my hand is. And I'll pop the camera in a little bit. So basically here. Okay, so this is this is effectively tracking my hand movements, um, and so this is just pulling out the um, this is this is pulling out the uh, center of the hand position, which you can get out out the SDK, and also using some part of the gesture recognition. So I can I can activate the pinch movement here, and it will also pick up this pinch movement. Uh, so what so what I've told that to do is to activate the grabbers at the end of the hand. Yeah, okay, so that's essentially what, what it is, is. It's coming in and it's tracking my hand, and then it's solving the, uh, solving the inverse kinematic equation of motion and saying, can we move the arm to here? Uh, I kind of found a quite good library that, was, uh, that, that someone had actually already built for doing this. Uh, and yeah, so this fundamentally allows me to go and... So within here, this is allowing me to then move my arm around. Uh, let's... Uh, a bit more. Yeah, uh, the uh, the coordinate space isn't exactly isn't exactly mapped correctly, but uh, but you can kind of see that this illustrates the purpose that you can move the arm around. What I'll do now is I'll stop it and reset it, and we'll have another go. Uh, so let's go back to the main uh, back to the main screen, and we'll then just do a bit of a reset operation on this. So. Uh, Okay, so I've just re-extended the arm. Well, then, because uh, what you find is it kind of drifts off a bit because there's no, uh, there aren't any positional sensors on here. Because we get the query, we'll find we're actually not at the zero, zero, zero. So we're back, and that's back at the zero position. So let's go and uh, turn this back on again, and uh, let's pop the camera over again. So it's the center of the screen. Okay, so this is going to pick my hand up. Picks it up and then it can find the coordinate. It will find the coordinates. It will then activate the arm. So on and so forth. Moving this. And then moving it across. Over there. gives you a quite good gist about what the project was about. So it was about interfacing the uh, RealSense SDK and getting it to drive this robot on. It's now picked up my second hand. And now it. Uh, so I'll just turn this off for now and then we come to a bit of code. Okay. okay, so let's say like how do you, like what are some of the kind of main features about the, uh, the RealSense SDK and how do you go about doing this? Um, so let's go jump into uh, let's go jump into uh, let's go jump into the main bit of the code that handles the UI stuff. So in this class, uh, let's look through. So the, the kind of the main there are two ways that you can kind of interface with the with, with the SDK. One is you can either run a main program loop, 
that goes over the uh, that basically goes over and queries for whenever a gesture is fired or a frame is processed. Um, and you can basically go around this kind of while loop and then pick out when movements have happened or gestures have happened and process them thereof. Or there's another way, which if you look up in the documentation, uh, the other way is you can basically uh, you can assign event handlers to your session that you've created. Uh, well, to your session and your uh, just to your uh, yes, essentially you can assign some event handlers, and when there's events are fired, you can handle them that way. Um, so the main thing here that you're going to have is, in the case of a hand, let's just roll into our new controller class. So in the case of tracking a hand, what we can do is, uh, let's jump into the method here, we transform this uh, let's go and see which one we're going to do here. So back into here. Fired. Okay, so this is actually one of the bits of code that handles when we when we find a gesture that's been fired. So this is just again another event handler. So we can handle this and this handles through this innumerable, and you can see uh, what what's what to do here. Um, the way that the gestures are pulled out is they're just generally kind of the gesture data comes out and it's just the name as a string, and you can handle these like this. So if you're doing a full pinch, I just have something to turn the gripper on or off. It's thumb up, so on and so forth. Um, one of the other things that you can do here is also is there so from the hand there comes gestures, um, and also from the hand comes alerts. That's the other that's the other event that gets raised by the hand. So you can also handle it with this uh, switch case enumerable that you have here, and you can do whatever you want. So this will tell you such as when the hand is de de detected, not detected, tracked, calibrated, so on and so forth. If you look these up in the SDK thing. This will show you how to basically handle the events of when you move the hand in and out of the tracking borders, or when it's been tracked actually, or when it's still or when it's been found but not yet tracked, uh, so you can handle those things there. Um, you can also find that the um, you you are returned events from the uh, you you returned events from the hand controller, but also you're streaming video out of this. Um, and so there's another set of events which is also raised from the camera itself. So um, what you can look here is there's this. Uh, on new sample event, which you can also handle, and this is for essentially drawing the um, this is essentially for for drawing the uh, video stream back to the screen, um, and that's that's where you can kind of handle that. There, you need to. Uh, um, the other thing that you have here is um, yeah, the other thing that you have here is uh, is is also the odd module process frame. So this is when you've actually had your um, had your algorithms process one of the frames that have gone and um, that. When they've actually processed some of the real real sets that you get out of it, and this is where we essentially handle the um, this is where we handle um, this is where we handle the data that comes back from the hand. Um, so what we just do is we just is here what we will do is we will um, is we'll get the, the position of the hand and then we'll run this assert arm movement thing. And this is what in this method we jump into this. This is what happens when we get the uh, when we get the position of the hand out. So. Let's go and say, okay. So what happens when we get our hand position here? So you have a uh, you have a hand data object which which comes from SDK again. We look in this uh, thing here. So when you start, you create a session and you create a hand module, um, and and the output of that goes into this hand data thing. And you can query that hand data to get stuff out about say where the joints are, where the fingers are, where the centroid of the hand is, um, so on and so forth. So what you need to then do is find the ID of the hand because you can have more than one hand in your uh, in your in your viewer, you can have two, so you need to know which one to access. Um, and by doing that, you can then call this query mass center world, and you'll get where the center of your hand is. But you can you can similarly do some other stuff like uh, I mean these are some some of the other, other methods that you have that you have available to yourself here. So you have have joints is calibrated query body side query mass center world query finger data. So Within this kind of when you have, when when you have this eye hand uh, object back, you can then query this for getting some of the further data out. Um, yeah, okay. So once we've kind of jumped into that, what we can then then do is query the uh, query the mass and world. And then once we've got this point out of it, uh, let's go back into our uh, arm movement. Uh, let's go back into our let me go back into our uh, arm movement method. So we get the hand out of there. Uh, and what we can then do is, 
then I have this thing which basically then transforms that into um, transforms that position of the hand because the coordinate system of the hand is a bit different. Um, yeah, because the coordinate system of the hand is not the same as the coordinate system of the robot arm, I have this to change that around. Uh, and then uh, basically we just, we just run this robot arm to go and move into to go and move in, into where the position of the hand is. Um, so I think, and that's uh, again, this is the robot arm thing. It's kind of a bit separate and not really within the context of here, but I hope this is kind of helping to show you um, some of the ways that you can essentially uh, pull that data out and then and then push it into somewhere else. Um, I found I think it was a uh, this robot arm was a library that I found called Test OWA 535, which if you search on Google, there's a um, if you search on Google for uh, basically hacking the Maplin robot arm, you'll find someone who's written a library for this. And I've added a few extra things to it. Um, all right, so uh, let's see what else are some other things about this SDK that are interesting. Um, if we go into uh, okay, so what else? So yeah, this is where you actually um, handle your. So when you when you initiate a movement controller, you can essentially. Uh, uh, That's the class that I've had here. So it's so it's essentially you can uh, you can register your event handlers here. Uh, these are various ones we have here. I've digested all five of that. I've gone through this already. This is interesting. I'll go back to the um, I'll go back to the listen one actually because this is how you set everything up for running here. Um, okay, so this is basically how you configure your. Uh, this is how you configure your um, your basic your session and your sense manager. So you have a session below that. You have a sense manager to handle the real sense sensor, which is contained within the session. And then attached to that sense manager, you can basically um, you can basically enable the extra algorithm modules. So let me look at. So when we when I call this enable hand thing here, that allows us to use a. Um, that, and I, that basically enables the hand algorithm model out of here, but uh, so I'll show you some of the other ones which come out of this as well. So this thing also allows you to, uh, to enable 3D scans, uh, blob face, so on and so forth. So this is where you can access the different algorithm modules from the, um, from the uh, real sense sense manager. Um, again, what you're going to do here is once you've created a hand module, you need to configure the way that those hands are, um, you, you need to configure the way that the hand module is going to act. Um, so what you can then do is these two things are basically uh, working out what the event handler is for um, for gestures and alerts, which five, which we then saw the um, which we then saw go back to the where did they go back. So we use uh, basically these are just delegate methods that go into here and check the on fire gesture and that's what we handle that and then the on fire alert one. Uh, let's go into going in? Uh, yeah, so that's how you subscribe to the gestures and alerts when you when you set up the, conf the configuration, uh, and that's if you're going through the kind of event handle model of doing this. Uh, the other one is as well as uh, we're enabling the alerts. So these are two things that should just fire when a hand is tracked and calibrated, and I'm picking that up um, to make sure that my hand is in the right position that I can actually start to then move my robot arm uh, once that's done. Uh, the same as you can you can enable the gestures, so these things will get passed back to you when uh, when a when the, the hand gesture handler gets called when a gesture is fired out. Uh, you then apply the changes, and then you start and you use this init, um, and that basically starts and that starts running it, and that thing starts streaming the frames out of it. Um, again, you've got uh, I think there are if you look through some of the samples on the on the real sense SDK, there's um, there's quite a few different types of stream types, so you can get the color. What else is in here? Um, you can get the uh, so yeah, you can basically pull out these kind of things here: depth, any color, ah, oh, left, right. Um, yeah, okay. Um, those things. Uh, I think uh, personally, I, I I think using I've I did some of the demos and some of the demo code with the using the while loop to handle a lot of this, and I found just doing the event element that seemed a bit cleaner uh, and seems to work all right. Um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much kind of how this project came together. Um, yeah, and I, I think it was just kind of quite nice to, to see that it wasn't, it wasn't. I mean, once you've kind of gone through a few tutorials, there wasn't too much extra to kind of get one thing and hack it into another. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, if, have a look through this ro robot library. Um, 
one of the things that I did do it here actually was to add some extra functionality so you could get all the joints moving at once because uh, I think the, the one you get is stock, it moves one arm and then stops and then moves another joint and then stops, but it's kind of changed a bit so it will now all go at once. Um, okay, so I think I'll just jump back to the application again uh, and we'll have another little go with this and I guess it's pretty much everything. Okay, let's go back to its arm. Okay. Um, okay. So, that, so it should pick up the hand. Still a bit of a perfection to get to with this. But, uh, yeah, I think some of the uh, gears have gone on that a bit. But, uh, okay, well, I think that kind of illustrates the whole thing, and hopefully that's given you a bit of a run round about how the SDK works and how you can get some things out of it. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. It was great. Um, so I have uh, one question for you uh, yeah. from Prabhu. Uh, so is the source code and details available in any website? Uh, yeah, okay. Can I, uh, where can I, I'll just paste in the GitHub. Um, yeah, I've got this up on GitHub. Um, so I will just uh, post that up now, actually. Uh, repositories. Yeah, okay. I'll just put this in the chat box now. Okay, that's awesome. We will also uh, send it um, tomorrow. Um, we will send everyone an email, and uh, we can add that as well to the email. Cool. Yeah, so that's great. Uh, thank you, Anthony. It was awesome. Um, yes. Thank you. So now um, we are going to uh, have um, Rudy's presentation. Um, Rudy, are you ready? <coughs> Rudy, can you hear us? Rudy, you're on mute. Just if you just unmute uh, yourself, then we can start with your presentation. Oh, oh hello. Yeah, hello. Perfect. Is that is that unmuted? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, here we go. So, um, let me present this real quick. Um, all right. So. Um, thanks for attending the talk and a great presentation. The robot arm was amazing. I really, uh, was really awesome. Um, and uh, the presentation with the augmented reality uh, mix-in and uh, the, the videos was was really great. Uh, my project was uh, BioPen. I was working on an integration with a open source online quantum uh, simulation, and I was going to put that together with RealSense and move some molecules around. I integrated Oculus VR, and this is the tale of that journey. So BioPen was a real simple uh, place where I could just load up a molecule, store data on the back end. I used the CloudKit data for uh, Apple's uh, iCloud storage mechanism. So this has an, an iOS component as well. And when you sign in, then you can then you know, store private uh, data or whatnot, uh, but you were going to be able to visualize the electromagnetic spectrums that I was trying to uh, denote to everyone. And the simulations don't use the latest kernel because the the latest kernel right now is uh, under a non-disclosure for uh, scientific purposes. So as soon as that gets cleared out and uh, we we publish that out, we we can update the kernel um, to something other than these vendor walls like spheres because uh, there, there's a hidden mystery in the three-dimensional quantum physics that hasn't really been enlightened most folks. So what am I trying to say here? I'm trying to say that this, this was a necessary tool to try to present information to people because the, that presentation is really difficult. Um, the quantum physics is a really 3D problem. And so 
in order to get them to immerse themselves into the chemistry, you really got to jump into some of this virtual reality space. So we took the Gear VR and we did some hacking. We also took the RealSense camera and put them together to create something that would teach uh, the, the, another way. So this is all open source. You can find it at uh, orbitusbiomedical.github.io slash biopen. These were our goals. We wanted to teach. We wanted to use WebGL. We're using the 3.js library. We had Oculus Rift support with the Gear VR. So it, this is an Android device installed inside of a headset. It can work with Google Cardboard or any, any of the integrated variants. Um, in fact, we, we went and did the hacking on an iOS device just to show you uh, uh, how, how easy it is to push and, and do uh, any of these. Uh, then we integrated the RealSense camera. Of course, we invented a new protocol for data transmission and streaming into the device. We call it the RealSense data protocol, but don't let that fool you. It is nothing more than a simple TCP stream of very simple commands, and I will go over that in a second. So BioPen looks something like a simulation to show uh, data. This data is coming from PubChem and this uh, molecular search box can find pretty much any molecule you can name as long as the name is, is correct. The, the uh, matching results uh, search feature I, I stuff to implement, uh, that is a to-do. So what are we talking about here? This, the, the purpose of this is really to take these caveman drawings and turn them into something legible that people can actually understand. So we look at acetylene at the bottom here and you see three dashed lines. And I'm supposed to compile that 3D quantum physics and assume that I have, I have known this information, which is not the case. And what we're going to do is create a, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to write the organic chemistry uh, tutorials. Uh, I'm going to rewrite them in, in these, these hyperphysics equations and I'm going to push them out um, very soon. Uh, so this is an example of a very difficult molecule to really comprehend the electromagnetic spectrum of. And um, 3D really gives us another uh, contribution to the understanding of, of space and the fabric inside of it. The, the octanitrocubane here is a very uh, important molecule because it is it's one of the latest explosives uh, that the military is using and since this is global, I would say there's a, who knows how many militaries. But this kind of information gets very sensitive at that point and really cool. The retinal molecule, when we start talking about the electromagnetic spectrum, has this amazing property that can only be seen in its three-dimensional form. So this tool's trying to show that. What did we use to show that? We used 3.js. 3.js is an open source JavaScript library. It's very easy to use. It takes all the difficult out of programming 3D objects. I encourage everyone to just look at the examples, rewrite them, put some information in there, try to play and have fun and enjoy the thing that you do and love the most, and maybe that's programming. So whether it's robotics or whatnot, whether it's uh, any other sort of 3D, I really encourage you to at least look at the capabilities of such a cross-platform uh, browser-based uh, manipulation there. So very simple, we, we include these script sources. Um, we can see 3.js here, transform and trackball controls. I created these open source PubChem adapters that can give you the molecular data uh, based on a search. You can check them out. They're also on that open source uh, link, uh, slash PubChem adapter or PubChem some 3D. Uh, there are statistics. Uh, for this 3.js related and some <clears throat> other files. Here we initialize the JavaScript with uh, a WebGL div. We install a camera with two lines of code. We set a position on the camera. We push it back and, and the Z coordinate is, is forward and back into the screen and, and out. Uh, we set up a scene very simply. We add a color to the background and we add some fog. Uh, with, would take a lot of boilerplate code. It is all gone now and very simple to use. We add an event listener for the keys. We look for the R key, T key, and we change the transform controls accordingly. We add and, and subtract to change these alpha transform control sizes. Um, 
we set up our controls for the trackball, and these are all default parameters that are installed that we could manipulate had we need to, <clears throat> had we needed to. Um, we install lighting, so the ambient directional lighting uh, are very simple, all abstracted away. WebGL is is a little bit more, uh, like I said, the boilerplate code is gone. We we create a renderer. The renderer is the object that draws, and we bind a few objects to it. We go into an animation loop here, and we have a render loop down here. We render our particles. That's it. Nothing more. So PubChem, this is uh, this all this huge data bank is, uh, you know, it was, it was built by a lot of hardworking individuals, but they do not have any money and they don't have any time. And so what's really lacking is the exploitation of the data to do something amazing like teach in, in another level. So we have to use this as a, an adapter and a database that we can, you know, extend and, and try to contribute uh, to the community's knowledge uh, of the repository right there. So that's what we did with this PubChem adapter. Um, it's an open source little adapter. It just grabs the JSON and just brings it back from a search term. It's very simple, uh, but can find 50,000 or more molecules of you know, collected data. So we WebGL enable our devices. Uh, what a nightmare trying to get these browsers on these mobile devices to get anything running. So in the end, you know, at the end of the day, it was really just Android had the native browser was capable, uh, but uh, the device orientation controls were coming back in all kinds of wonky ways. And Chrome uh, was not drawing any WebGL um, it, on this Galaxy S6 Active. You now, that, that may not be true for other uh, devices, but uh, had the Galaxy S6 Active. So you may be wondering, uh, the Gear VR doesn't even work for the S6 Active, but uh, you know we hacked that, of course. Um, it only works with the S6 and the Note 4. Um, but like I said, this is a journey, and you, you can't let the hurdle stop you. So uh, this is just a simple example of a 3D uh, stereoscopic breakout. So you go to your browser, and the browser will draw a stereoscopic view of some data. And that's all you need for Google Cardboard or the Galaxy VR in this case. Um, and you are instantly immersed in the 3D zone. So. That's that's what we're going for here. Uh, the PubChem adapter, very simple, goes through, grabs the atom, atoms, gets the bonds, uh, puts them in some J, uh, <clears throat> JavaScript data. We are going to match them up. So the algorithm is as follows. The elements are outlined. Uh, so six means carbon, one means hydrogen. You're looking at a benzene molecule. So we see six carbons and six hydrogens. We now look uh, going across, striping from uh, the AID1 to AID2. We just match up, you know, element one hits element two, element one also binds to element three, element one also binds to element seven. Uh, element two binds to four, two binds to eight, number three binds, to, you know, you, you can see there's a pattern there, and then you can rebuild the molecule basically. And this is what the Gear VR looks like uh, before we take the Dremel. This is what it looks like after. Um, we had to make some modifications, but it uh, was worth it. The Galaxy S6 Active, like I said, uh, really liked the drop protection and all the other cool features, but this did not fit when I bought the device. Yeah, I did not pay attention that much, but at the same time, I wasn't worried. Um, what we did was we took it apart. Uh, we removed screw by screw. We began the process. I uh, took a Dremel and with machine-like precision tried to craft out the dimensions without damaging the internal components. But at the end of the day, the fit was luxurious and it was it was awesome. I could step into VR, and that was was really fun. And it's the window is so unpaved uh, that we could pioneer the whole future of the molecular interfacing, or let alone you know just web interfacing in a 3D VR zone, and you know using real sense to communicate and touch and and really push buttons in a VR space. It's, this is an uncharted land. We have a new ground to break. 
So, of course, I grabbed the iPhone. I strapped that guy in there. I happen to be a very powerful iOS developer, so Android's, it's, it's, you know, I'm working on it. Uh, but I uh, went for iPhone, and with the HTML5 property of the uh, GamePad API, we were able to grab a Sony PlayStation 4 controller uh, data and input that. I have those samples online. They're on the website as well. You can just plug in USB uh, micro into your USB PlayStation controller or any other controller, really. Most of them adhere to the same protocol. And we're instantly in. Uh, we can control and send our data there. Uh, here are some places where I learned how to do this. HTML5 rocks, tutorials, doodles, gamepad. Uh, was probably my favorite. Uh, the other three uh, used examples that had Node.js backends, which I, I am not ready to completely learn yet. And because of that, I wanted to stick to the front-end JavaScript only. So this, this I, the focus was JavaScript, HTML5, CSS3. Well, I use SAS, but you know, simple, simple. And I will get into Node eventually. Um, so this is the tester. These uh, it's Mac running Windows 10 here, setting up Boot Camp. Now we're going to integrate with the RealSense camera. Uh, it's another PC running with the RealSense. Checking out some of the demos, beginning with the RSDP uh, integration. What we're going to do now is we're going to transmit our data into a format that our computer can read and send into our device. So this uh, will begin the introduction to WebSockets. So I've been thinking about this uh, my whole life and trying to understand sockets programming as a child it just didn't work out because I mean, you know, all I could think of was an outlet. And I can't say that sockets programming is difficult. Now with HTML WebSockets with only a single line of code, I can send off WebSocket data and instantly communicate. So the, the, the hurdle is not quite so difficult. And thanks to Mr. Darren Davies here on the GitHub who really just came up with the answer. The var connection new WebSocket. You you say ws colon slash slash and then IP address of whatever device I happen to be on, you know, whatever, and then colon port would choose nine thousand for for example or something. Connection not open. Bam, you send your data instantly. And what you need on the other end to receive this now is a WebSocket server. So we chose Python and we ran with Python's Twisted and the open source Autobahn library. So with the, with the Autobahn library and Twisted and Python, in Python, we, we were able to get all that real sense data, as you can see, to the server in the back end. Um, so I wanted to break this up and so you could see what, what, what's happening. Uh, we have the green, the red, and the blue box here. Uh, the FF Hands Viewer plus the WebSockets. Uh, that's actually the FF Hands Viewer underscore RSDP demo, and you can find that on the open source thing. Uh, it's a JavaScript WebSockets client, so it's going to be transmitting all the hand data and everything out of real sense. And then we transmit it in a really simple protocol, just built right on top of just sending those text uh, messages. Nothing, nothing like uh, optimized in a binary way. Um, real sense data protocol server in Python. Then we receive that on the Gear VR with a JavaScript WebSockets client as well. So we're going to talk about the <clears throat> client on this green end first. Uh, the code's very simple. On open, uh, we <clears throat> set up with a connection and we just run with the IP of whatever we're running at. Uh, we open the connection, we send off this connection initialized successfully uh, on, on a message. We have this real simple uh, code that is just exactly from the sample. Text message received, right? Connection closed. When we get a connection, we send our hand data and we just take a json.stringify of that hand data. So we just pipe that over to the RSDP server. Very easy. It's just an insertion right into that little bit of code. And another insertion, we have the no hands detected message. We also send off gestures. So then in the RSDP protocol, <clears throat> you see it's built on the web sockets really. We have the following messages. We have the initialization, the close, the hand, the gesture, no hands detected, the face. We have spoken and spoken alert for command gestures. Um, this is a server log looking here. Uh, we're running extremely fast rates, fast enough to, to get more than 
120 frames per second even. Um, yeah, so like right there we see the little hand identifier and then the JSON blurb, and that's all machine parsable. So that is the middle part, the Gear VR now, uh, the WebSockets client. Um, found a lot of problems with uh, other browsers here. The conclusion is I need to rewrite some of this into CSS 3D, which won't, won't be hard. It started out CSS 3D, and I just need to put an option to, to choose when the renderer is not available. Uh, what about native application development? Well, the WebView native app uh, window for the Android just didn't allow WebGL, and the UI WebView ran WebGL pretty well on iOS. So the app wrappers, those were included in the Biopen VR project. Um, and native OpenGL, right? I mean, let's get to the nitty gritty. The project scope creep really uh, came into play here because I just wanted to focus on HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript. But future iterations could definitely have a C sharp real sense WebSocket server running to really just pipe that data straight into the device. Um, you can go to the URL slash this pen.html and then whatever identifier. Um, you can test this out yourself. Uh, we do the stereo parameter real simply as, as a, a parameter in the URL for now. Um, the controls for device orientation, this is like where you're moving your head and you see the molecule uh, fixed in a certain coordinate space. Uh, mixed with head tracking will be a very nice uh, mark of uh, augmented reality. Mixed with some AR trackers potentially would really uh, make a nice demonstration there. So this is what it looks like with the uh, iOS device hooked up. The uh, uh, well, if you if you look at the right, you can see the molecule in very faded figments and figures. So. Yes, thank you for dreaming with us and, and, and motivate yourself, you know, you're, you're paving the future, so good job, well done, um, that's, that's us. Now I can switch to a camera mode or something and show you, um, let's see here, let me figure this out here, there we go, okay, I should switch, I don't know how to switch this thing, main screen. Okay, so behind me is the, uh, maybe, uh, here we go. Um, <laughs> okay, so so there's the RSDP protocol working. You can see all that data up there, and uh, it's, it's just picking up my hand data. And I, I, I just it's transmitting over the wire to this other machine over here, right? And uh, you can see in 3D space we have some kind of a molecule. It only shows up when you look down because I wanted it to be in front of me in, in the keyboard space. Um, once you have those stereo views, and like I said, the URL is right there. The sample code's right there. You can just go online right now to orbitusbiomedical.github.io slash capital bio slash capital pin slash intel ff hands viewer viewer okay that's not the URL. Uh, that, that's for that one never mind but let me put this in here and uh it's, it's, there's not much to show you i guess uh you're just gonna have to try it for yourself um but uh yeah there she is wow yeah Ooh, some 3d in um, augmented reality space Ooh. Okay, okay. So, yeah, that's never fun when you're just watching. Um, any questions? That's it. Thank you, Rudy. Um, that was great. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, people really liked your presentation, and so thank you. <laughs> um, did you have a little, maybe, video or, um, I don't know. How do you try to do the demo right now? <laughs> I'm afraid I don't have any videos, just online links. Okay. That's all we'll I got. Right share now. that in an email tomorrow and uh, everyone can see. Yep, that's great. Okay. Thank you so Thank much. You. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. So, thank you everyone for watching. Um,
we will send uh, an email um, tomorrow and uh, we will give you all the information. We will be also uploading uh, the webinar to YouTube uh, right now so that you can watch it again and see uh, if you missed some things. Um, again, thank you so much for joining today and um, have a great uh, rest of your day. Thank you.